jumped off the roof of my house when I was five years old. Intentionally, I really thought I could fly. I didn't believe it was impossible that I could fly. And so I carefully put together a small red cape. This is not what all superheroes wear. And I got my cat, Sam, and I dressed him up in a little red dish towel and climbed to the top of the roof and flung him off the roof while I went with him. And for a few glorious moments, I think we were flying. <laughs> I don't remember much about the landing, except that it was in my mom's bottle brushes, and Sam and I were miraculously unhurt. There were some very colorful bruises and a kaleidoscope of cuts and scratches, but otherwise unscathed. The part I don't remember, evidently, my mother came out of the house at the precise moment to see her daughter fling herself <laughs> off of the roof. It's a miracle my mother survived my childhood. Um, but really, I just wanted to fly. And I was devastated that it had failed. And worse, Sam wouldn't come near me for weeks. <laughs> but really, the most important thing, the most important thing was that I didn't believe I couldn't fly, only that I'd somehow gotten it wrong. And my Welsh grana, who helped frame much of who I was to become, told me that it wasn't that I couldn't fly, but rather that there were all kinds of flight, some even on the inside. I just needed to know how, and it would help, of course, to have the right wings. I just needed wings. I hadn't thought of wings. Well, that changed everything, and I've been leaping in a variety of ways ever since, not always with forethought or even wisdom, but leaping nevertheless. There was one incident after a double dog dare, and after my dad had told my brothers around the dinner table that it didn't matter if I had good grades at school because I was only a girl. Well, I was nine years old, and I went to the top of the telephone pole, the top of the telephone pole, and the fire department had to come and get me down because, I mean, I was at the top, and I knew somehow not to leap from there, and a police car had to take me home. I was grounded, literally, that day for many weeks, and I was not allowed to climb so much as a footstool for a while. But soon I was back in my tree fort planning my next adventure, and sometimes I would just lean back while swinging in the rope swing, eyes closed, imagining my wings into being. Just to be clear, I am not a thrill seeker, <laughs> nor fearless, really. I'm often terrified. I was terrified this morning. I'm terrified right now. But I just did whatever it was anyway, and it didn't occur to me. It has never occurred to me that anything is impossible. However, you will find this ironic, I am afraid to fly on airplanes. <laughs> it's true, as much as I love to travel, I'm white-knuckled on takeoffs and landings, and it's been suggested that perhaps it's because I'm not flying the plane and then it's not my wings, <laughs> maybe. So how does one stay in control and leap at the same time? There's an essential faith in one's invisible safety net, but, and I think this is important, sometimes it's vital to lose control, to plummet, and have to pick oneself up and figure it out even without the net, to surrender, to crash land, to break open like Humpty Dumpty. Some many years ago, after an act of violence, I lost all of my writing, an inordinate amount of writing, all the writing I had written up to that time in my life. More than half a novel, a book of poetry, two children's books, a play, two screenplays, and more songs that I'd written for musicals than I can remember. Gone, absolutely gone, destroyed. <sighs> it's hard to say that. I was shattered, and I can still taste the metallic taste of that loss. It's a war wound of sorts, a kind of emotional shrapnel. But again, I fiercely believe in getting up after crashing into pieces. Even if some pieces are left behind, my grana, ever the brave soldier, would have pulled me up out of whatever muck and mire I might have allowed myself to sink into, except by then she was gone. So I had to do it myself, and it hurt. I mean, it hurt, and I was too afraid to try and leap again. I was never going to write again. Leaping does not mean that you're not afraid, but if you're not afraid, it's just a step. But I eventually climbed back up to the top of whatever roof that was, and at this time without a cape, and I leapt. And the wings were still there, a bit tattered, and I found out I could ride again. And I learned something, that our yesterday does not own our today. I think 
about things I've started, teaching inner city kids art, raising shoes for the homeless, starting theater companies, only crazy people do that. Really, they were all leaps of faith moving to Washington among them. I've always passionately believed that art can change the world. It sounds trite and it's overused on some level, but I've seen it happen. People, children, and adults, different languages, cultures, religions, races, backgrounds, all connecting to a piece of music or a painting leveled by a poem or an evocative turn of phrase expressed by an actor. And by changing the world, I mean doing some small part of something that changes the air around you, like flying. The air does change, I've felt it. Something ineffable literally enters your skin when you are flying. I think it's imperative that everyone learns to leap in some way. Write a poem, fall in love, travel, garden, feed the homeless, do something that gives you a moment, oh my god, I'm flying without a safety net here. At the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter what the leap is for, only that we do it, that we open into our raw, beautiful, imperfect, rascally selves and feel the pain that happens when we stretch wings we forgot we had, for we all have them. And it hurts sometimes, okay, hurts most of the time, when we stretch them as wide as we really can. When I moved here, I thought it was just going to be for about six months. My mom had been very ill, and I honestly thought I didn't have much time with her. And I thought, well, I only have one mom, and I can write anywhere. And so I'd, I'll come to Washington for a short time and then return home to San Francisco. It was a tremendous leap for me. My life was flourishing. My friends and colleagues thought I had gone bonkers, and yet I found myself turning down shows, putting everything I owned in a U-Haul along with my two cats, and driving north during one of the worst winters in recent history. Snow, chains, I was driving a U-Haul on mountains. It was harrowing. I, I just, well, I just leapt again into the unknown. One cannot always predict where a new flight pattern will lead us. I had decided I wouldn't do any theater while I was here. <laughs> I had theater waiting for me back home. Yes, well, did I mention that sometimes our flight patterns change when we're not looking, and sometimes even when we think we're looking, but maybe we're not seeing? And now I've been here for four years, and after a couple of close calls, my mom's doing great. And I'm still turning down jobs in California because, for some mad reason, in addition to directing for both WCT and recently Wicca, I decided to start a Shakespeare festival. A free, outdoor Shakespeare festival in a semi-rural island in the Pacific Northwest where it rains. <laughs> I mean, it's free, and I somehow still have to pay all the artists. What was I thinking? I mean, who does that? It rains here. We rehearse in the rain and sometimes perform in the rain, but we just keep getting up there and doing it. And it's a leap without a safety net or possibly any common sense, but I did it anyway. For the record, it's not for the faint of heart by a long shot. But really, living fully and unabashedly is not for the faint of heart. As for my original plan to write, well, yes, I'm a writer. My first year here, I wrote quite a bit, actually, and was tootling along, minding my own business, and then met my writing partner, Suzanne. And suddenly, I was flying in tandem, words pouring out while, I, while we stepped off cliffs together. The miraculous and terrifying part of a relationship of any kind is finding that trust in the creative struggle. And for all that we continue to work our way through our joint and our solo projects, I can say it's much nicer not always flying alone. Well, maybe that's why, way back when I was five, I wanted Sam with me on that first flight. <laughs> because really, I believe in collaboration. I've always thought that if I've done my job well as a writer or an artist, that I become invisible. I think reaching out to work with others in a creative project is an act of absolute faith, of intimacy, of hope. And I think of Emily Dickinson. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches on the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Our yesterday does not own our today. And I've since been blessed beyond measure to land in places in the world, sometimes words, sometimes stories flying out of me as I go, and now I seem to have finally touched down here. On this island, wings intact, surrounded and blanketed by a kind of love 
I've never known. And perhaps that's what a safety net is, really. Love, love, look around this hall. No, I mean really, look. Look around this hall, at each other. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Do you feel that? It's everywhere you look. And you are reflecting it everywhere. And later, when all these words and stories and songs have washed over you and through you, stretch out those wings, the ones you keep hidden, and leap into your own songs and dances and paintings and gardens and adventures. Allow yourself to delight, torment, inspire, and bewilder yourselves and share them. You have to share them. You don't need a red cape. And you have more safety net than you ever imagined, but you have to leap to feel it. And it might not be perfect, and you might not know how, but get up, get up, get up, climb up, and practice. Because practice doesn't always make perfect, but it makes better. <laughs> practice does not always make perfect, but it makes better. And our yesterday does not own our today. Your yesterday does not own your today. So leap. Thank you. Thank you.